Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The South African Nuclear Energy Corporation's board and executive management has seen a shake-up. Rebecca Campbell tells us more about these developments. Hi Rebecca. What changes were made to the board and executive management? Well, the entire board was replaced, 100%, completely. The new board chairman is Dr. Rob Adam, uh, who many years ago was actually a CEO of Nexa but is currently the Managing Director of the South African Radio Astronomical Observatory. Um, in terms of management, the current CEO, Pumzili Shalani, has been suspended, and an interim acting CEO, Don Robertson, has been appointed. Robertson uh, retired from being uh, the CEO of Nexus subsidiary NTP Radio Isotope some years ago. Uh, so he has uh, significant, uh, considerable experience at NEXA and in the nuclear field. So it's completely uh, clean sweep at board level, uh, new broom installed. What reasons did Energy Minister Jeff Khadebe give for the changes? Well, he accused, uh, well, they're very serious allegations. He accused the previous board of being inept, uh, of being defiant, uh, he accused them of financial and administrative mismanagement and irregularities. Uh, he accused them of disregarding express instructions from the shareholder. Uh, he cited a couple of cases. Uh, you, of course, you have to remember, a uh, background to this is that NTP radioisotopes, which uh, produces radioisotopes especially for medical purposes, uh, has effectively been out of production for more or less a year because of uh, safety concerns. Um, there had been a shutdown, then it had been reactivated, only to be shut down again, and it was recently reactivated again. But for most of the year, it hasn't been in production. And NTP is a very important global producer of medical radioisotopes, not just local. It exports to something like 50 countries and has between a quarter and a third of the global market share in the molybdenum-99 market. Molybdenum-99 is a very important radioisotope for medical purposes. So this had very significant economic and even more importantly, very significant public health implications, not only in South Africa, but over a considerable swathe of the world. Uh, so the failure to get NTP back in operation for so long uh, was a central element in uh, Radebi's, Engine Minister Jeff Radebi's indictment of the previous board as having been inept uh, and failing to do their duty. In terms of defiance, he cited uh, a couple of uh, important examples. One, because of the NTP crisis, uh, when he was appointed energy minister, he delegated uh, to his deputy, uh, the, the deputy minister of energy, uh, the duty of liaising with NTP uh, to see what was necessary, what, what the department could do to help. Uh, restore the operation. And according to Radebi, uh, CEO Shalani uh, instructed the NTP board not to cooperate with the Deputy Energy Minister. And the then chairperson of the board, Dr. Kelvin Kem, wrote to the minister complaining about her attempts to liaise with the board. So that was one example of defiance. And the second was the Memorandum of Understanding that Nexa signed with Rosatom Healthcare, which is a subsidiary of the giant Russian state-owned Rosatom nuclear group. And he said they'd signed it even though he'd expressly told them not to. So defiance, incompetence, ineptness, mismanagement, financial administration, it was a uh, pretty impressively long string of serious allegations against them. What is the new chairperson's vision for the entity? 
Well, uh, when I asked him that, uh, his response was, it's too soon. And instead, there are fundamental questions that have to be asked about Nexa. Uh, and of course, uh, a key is uh, what is necessary to get NTP stabilized again. It's in production again, but they, they want it stabilized and sustainable for economic reasons, technological reasons, and healthcare reasons. Uh, the, as as Radebi had said, one of his indictments was that South Africa's market share in this global market was endangered. And they obviously want to secure that market share uh, in the global healthcare market and build on it. And uh, one uh, thing uh, I, I believe is that they also want to expand uh, Redo isotope uh, production in South Africa. But then there are other f uh, questions. For example, Nexa has certain strategic facilities that were created or expanded in the expectation that the country would build a fleet of new nuclear power stations. But the new independent uh, resource plan 2018 for the country's electricity generation uh, out to the year 2030 has no provision for new nuclear power. So that's 12 years without a new nuclear power station being ordered. And what happens to these facilities? You know, uh, Nexa has a, a small scale but real nuclear manufacturing capability that is manufacturing nuclear components. Now that requires very high standards and it requires uh, a very strict certification process that is difficult and expensive to get and to maintain. Do you continue to maintain it or do you let it lapse? If you let it lapse, then you have to recreate it from scratch 10 years later. Another sector is Pelchem, which is a fluorochemicals uh, operation. Now, fluorochemicals are a niche uh, market around the world uh, but again it's a it's a, it's a high-tech uh, business not many countries are active in it but Pelchem doesn't make is not commercially um, particularly successful and this comes from the days by the way when South Africa uh, had developed the ability to produce its own nuclear fuel and uh, fluorine uh, chemicals were crit are a critically important part of the uh, uranium enrichment process. Again, this is a very specialized capability. Should this be kept or should be shut down? If it's shut down, the chances of re-establishing it again are very remote. It's, it's, you either have it or you don't. So that's a you know a very big question, and these questions have to be discussed by the board with the government. Uh, so there's going to be very serious discussions on the future of Nexa, and the future courts, and what Nexa should do, what it should keep, uh, how it should develop. Um, one thing, of course, I have to make clear: the NTP shutdown did not in any way ref affect the Safari One nuclear reactor. The reactor itself continued to function perfectly normally and perfectly safely uh, throughout this entire process. And Adam is a strong supporter of replacing Safari 1 in due course. But the reactor's got at least another 20 years life in it, according to recent examinations. So that's not an urgent matter. And one of its key functions is actually production, production of molybdenum 99, um, which um, is then processed in NTP. And it was the processing end outside the reactor in a separate building uh, where the safety problems were. Uh, but you can also produce molybdenum 99 from linear particle accelerators which are a lot cheaper to build than reactors and a lot easier to license. 
and South Africa has accelerators and experienced accelerators has the expertise. So if South Africa wants to expand radioisotope to production, will this require a new reactor alongside Safari One, which we know was the plan of the previous uh, board and uh, uh, administration, or do you go for linear accelerators? The thing is with linear accelerators is they're much less efficient than reactors. So cheaper, easier license, but much less efficient. Uh, new reactor, more expensive, much more complex to license, a lot more efficient in producing life-saving radioisotopes. This is the kind of questions, these are the kind of questions the board and the government and the management of NEXA have to face. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.